So in engineering, when we talk about loaded cables, we're usually talking about cables that are under three different kinds of loading scenarios, which are concentrated loads, distributed loads, and cantonary loads. And that's what we're going over in this video. If you find it helpful, hit that like button and please subscribe. So a concentrated load is a load on a cable that is pulling down at individual points, and that might be a rope or cable tied to those points or just something else hanging off of it like on a hook or something and the way we analyze those is through the method of sections and the method of joints using equilibrium equations and the reason why we can do that is because those little sections that are stretched between um, loading points or reaction points is we generally consider them to be relatively um, straight so they're not curved even though they are going to curve a little bit but um, we approximate that they're pretty straight so we can use the method of sections to analyze them and you use the, some of the forces in the x direction and some of the forces in the y direction and some of the force or some of the moments to analyze those and what you'll end up doing is you'll need to solve for several un unknowns and so you'll need several equations. So you'll build up a system of equations using those equilibrium equations, and you will be able to solve for all those unknowns. And something to note about the forces in the x direction for not only concentrated loads, but for distributed loads and catenary loads is that the tension in the horizontal direction is always going to be the same throughout the cable. So if your reaction at one end is say 10 kilonewtons, the reaction force in the x direction in the, at the other end is also going to be 10 kilonewtons. It's going to stay the same throughout the beam, or throughout the cable, I mean. So, um, if you want a video explaining of me explaining more of that in detail, you can click on this video link and that'll take you to another one of my videos. The next one, distributor loads, is a cable hanging under a load um, that is pulling down equally at all points on the cable in the vertical direction something like this and it might be holding up a um, a beam or something or for a ridge a bridge or a road um, and it looks something like that and the way you solve for those is you use equations and it gets pretty complicated with this as well as with catenary, um, catenary loads. It gets pretty complicated with the equations, but they are solvable. Uh, if you want a video of me explaining more of that, and as well as giving those equations, you can click on this video link and you can go to that video. Um, and the last one is catenary, which is a cable just hanging under its own weight. Now the reason why we analyze this differently than a distributed load is because with distributed loads, each segment of the cable is being pulled down evenly. And so it would probably actually look like you'd have more of these in here, and probably even more than that. But at any given segment, there is the same amount pulling down in the vertical direction. But um, when you have a catenary load, um, say this is one section of the cable like maybe in the middle where it's more horizontal and then at the end you might have something that looks more like that and that's obviously exaggerated but the segments of these are about the same width in the horizontal direction but if these were segments of cable this one would weigh more because it's longer than this one and so in this uh, horizontal span you have more weight pulling down uh, on this one than you do on this one and what that does with a cable just hanging under its own weight is it creates a hyperbolic um, curve with that cable whereas with a distributed load you have a parabolic curve and what that forces you to do is you have equations that um, use hyperbolic trig functions and it gets pretty messy but if you want a video going over that, me explain that, you can click on this video link and that'll take you another to another one of my videos and I explain all the equations in that too. And so while these two can be pretty complicated, 
with the right equations and um, analyze them right, you can figure it out. So I hope you found this helpful. If you did, hit that like button. If you're new to this channel, my name is Preston Palmer with Student Engineering, and my goal is to help other engineering students like me understand engineering. So hit that like button and please subscribe.